Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 154th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. We're going to wrap up our open SSL encryption conversation. Um, let's kind of do a quick review. I have to apologize if my voice is a little bit hoarse and my allergies are really kicking my butt today. So, um, if you haven't watched the previous, I think, like three or four videos, go ahead and do so. Um, we've covered RSA encryption and AES. Um, quick refresher. Um, AES is for bulk encryption. It's meant for large volumes of data. It's a block cipher. I should say one of the mode that we're using is a block cipher because it can have different modes. RSA is a um, public key algorithm. Um, essentially, you have a public key and a private key. Uh, the private key, obviously, you keep to yourself. The public key is what you would give out to your friends. So we're going to pick right up where we left off. Um, we have fleshed out all the code for the Cypher class. Let's just double check to see that we've done that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, it looks good. Um, so we're going to dive in here. And this is going to be kind of our little test application. And we've been running tests. Um, you can see we've got test RSA and test AES. And we are going to... Ah, gosh, let me get adjusted in my seat here. I'm so excited I just can't sit still. <laughs> We're going to make a couple functions here. So bool, read file, there we go, I'm going to say qstring, file name. Yeah, the, uh, the pollen is so bad here right now that literally I washed my truck yesterday and this morning I can write my name on the hood. It's just ridiculous. Boy, that's a misspelling. File B name. There we go. File name. Let's call this F. Uh, and really all we're just going to do is we're going to read the contents of the file into a qubyte array. And um, we're panning that qubyte array um, per reference. Or I'm sorry, per value, not reference. Jeez, tell I'm kind of out of it today. And we're going to say Q crit. False. Just going to read all the file now. Note that's kind of dangerous if you have like a huge file. So once again, not production level code. We're just pretty much just testing here. Um, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you kind of know what I mean when I say production level code and why you would not want to read an entire file into memory like we just did. Um, if you don't, um, while I'm writing out the next function, I will briefly explain it. Basically, um, let's say you have 4 gigs of RAM and you go to open a 20 gig file and you read that all into memory. Um, it will attempt to read it all. And what it'll do is it'll start swapping to disk. And swapping to disk is a bad thing because it slows your computer down. And qbyte array. I'm going to try really hard not to clear my throat or cough into the microphone because it's kind of gross, but um, once again, I'm like, I don't know if you can hear my voice is really raspy. If it gets too bad, I'll just pause the video and cough my brains out for like 30 seconds and then start it over again. Okay, and then we're going to say Q file. Whoops, I don't want write file. I want uh, Q file open. Why did I do that? Jeez. Maybe I do need to go back to bed. That was an amateur hour. Let's just grab this guy. Copy and paste. Gotta love copy and paste here. And f.close. 
we're just going to use these functions for our little tests that we're going to be writing here. So, so far we've got um, read file, write file, test RSA, test AES. Let's give us a good build, make sure we didn't goof anything stupid. All right. So let me look at my notes real quick here. Um, all right, so why would we use RSA and AES? This is kind of the fundamental question that these tutorials have been building up to. Um, AES, as you remember, has a key. Actually, it's a passphrase, and from that we derive a key and initialization vector, but that passphrase has to be kept secret at all times. We can't let that get out. Otherwise, it's pointless to encrypt the data anyway. So we use RSA to encrypt those keys. So what we're going to write are the functions to combine the two together. We're going to say encrypt combined. And it's going to have a matching function here. Decrypt combined. All right, so first thing we need to do is, you guessed it. Don't know why I call it C wrapper, I just do. So we're gonna encrypt the AES key. And we're gonna use RSA to encrypt that. So we're gonna say Q byte array key equal, woo, excuse me public key so we're gonna get the public key here and then we're gonna say RSA yeah I don't want to do that public key equal now all we've done so far is we've gotten the RSA public key. Remember, you want the public key because, well, that's what they're going to encrypt it with. We're looking at this from the premise of someone else is going to encrypt the file and send it to you, and you want to decrypt it. So in order to do that, they have to use your public key because they will have it, send it to you, and you'll use your private key to decrypt it because, remember, your private key has to stay private. So we're going to make a random bytes, it's going to be our passphrase, and we're going to oops, make it base64 encoded. A um, little bit of discussion here. Why are we doing this? Well, this is going to be our AES key, and you don't want a static key. What you want is something that's random, something totally just unique, random. You don't even want to tie it to CPU time or you know Unix time or anything like that. You want just random bytes. And then we're base64 encoding it. That way, it'll be somewhat human readable. Um, it'll just be random junk, but you know what I mean. Um, also, if you're going to do any uh, transmission of data, you want to uh, whoops, you want to make sure that that data is not going to get um, encoded or re-encoded in transit. Otherwise, it will, of course, invalidate your key, and then you're kind of messed up. RSA. So here is our public key. Oops. And now we want to passphrase. So really all we're doing at this point is just encrypting that AES key. So we're going to say qdebug. If I could spell qdebug. That's our encrypted key. Now, why did we encrypt that first? Just to prove that you really have to encrypt it. You don't want to forget that step. Um, now we're going to actually use the the unencrypted key to encrypt the data. And let's call this plain. Um, 
Hello world, why not? Plain test, no, plain text. There we go. Let me scroll down so we can see here. So we've got our plain text, and now we want to actually, well, you guessed it, we need to encrypt this. So we're going to say cubite array encrypted equals C wrapper. Whoops. Encrypt AES passphrase. Now, very important, make sure you use the passphrase, the unencrypted version of that, not the encrypted key. Um, the reason for that, if you use the encrypted key, well, you're not going to have the same results when you go to decrypt this, obviously. So, All right, so we've got that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two together. So we're going to say Q file f We'll call this test. Whoops. Test.enc. Um, the file extension doesn't really matter. Some people get hung up on that. It really makes no bit of difference. The operating system really doesn't care. And we're going to say Q file. Write only. And if this looks very similar, it's because it kind of is. And we're just going to copy and paste this because I like saving time. Okay, and then we're going to say QDebug. And we just want to debug out the encrypted key length. That way we know what we're looking for. It should be 256, but sometimes things will get kind of crazy and you need to figure out what happened. So that's just literally a debug message for us to see what's going on. So we're going to say encrypted data. First thing we want to do is append the encrypted key. So we're going to take the encrypted AES key and slap it right into this byte array. And then we're going to say encrypted data dot append. And we want to take the encrypted data from our actual plain text. Then we want to close the file. Well, actually, we want to write all that, sorry. And now we want to close the file. And let's just debug out. So there is our encrypted, well, let's make another one here. Actually, let's put it here. Combined. So really all this test is going to do is it's going to say if the encrypt combined, this little guy we just wrote here, returns true, then we're going to decrypt combined. Um, just a very simple, like I said, not production level code, just simple testing. And let me pull up my file browser here. Um, there is no test.enc out here. We're going to run this. Hopefully it'll generate the encrypted file and then we can look at it real quick. Hmm, file name's not declared in the scope. What have we done wrong? <laughs> Probably would help if we actually gave it a real file name, right? Let's look at this, see what I've done wrong here. do 
it the easy way. That's what happens when I read from my notes and my notes aren't fully up to date here. There we go. All right, so there is our encrypted AES key in all its glory. And it is 256 bytes long and the encryption is now finished. So if we look here, we have our test ENC. We're gonna open that with gedit and it's of course just gonna look monstrosity ugly um, we're going to edit anyways. And you see right here, I don't know if all this read, if you can actually pick it up where it says salted underscore underscore. That's the actual beginning of the, whoops, I just modified it. I don't want to do that. That's the actual beginning of the file. And then the first eight bytes are the salt and then the rest is the actual data. So all of this up here is the actual key that's been encrypted with RSA. So you can see in this case, our key is actually bigger than our encrypted data. It's kind of kind of messed up, but that's just kind of how that is. Oops, let me get my notes back off screen here. So now we want to try to decrypt that file. I'm gonna actually run this again, just to make sure it doesn't blow up. All right. So we are going to decrypt this file here. get my notes lined up here. Really felt like I was going to cough. Sorry about that. Qbyte array data. And this is where we need to actually use one of those little helper functions that we were messing around with. Read file and we want to say test ENC. Data. And I'm just going to, you know what? Why not? Q string file name. Eh, no, I won't do that. I was going to get all fancy, but I'm not going to do it. So, what we're going to say is if we cannot read test.enc, which is our encrypted data, into this buffer here, this little data, then we're going to return false. And we should, you know, actually do a cute bug. Why not? Let's do it just in case. All right, so. cursor didn't want to go where I wanted it. All right, so what we have to do now is we have to load the encrypted key, the RSA encrypted key. So we're going to say qbyte array, header, salted underscore underscore. If you're wondering where I'm getting salted underscore underscore, it's actually from the open SSL command line application. It adds that. And part of this is this program's role or need is that we wanted it to, to I just stuttered, wanted to want it to be interoperable with the open SSL command line. That way, say you are writing a custom program, you're shooting it off somewhere. We want somebody to be able to write a simple you know, Perl or Python or PowerShell file that they could extract this data and call the command line. That way you don't have to compile and hand them a special program, although you definitely could. So now we're just going to find the index of the salted header like I showed you earlier. I went and saw X-Men Apocalypse with my daughter last night. I, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I mean, graphically, it was amazing. I mean, they, all the X-Men movies are just amazing. But that's why they're these big budget movies, right? But this storyline, I don't know. It was kind of whatever. 
I mean, everybody was like hardcore and badass, except for Olivia Munn, um, who was pretty much running around in lingerie for two and a half hours, which, whatever. I realize they, you know, need need that kind of stuff in there to get people to watch, but. All right, so we're just gonna say we found salt at that position. That way we know where in the files, just so, you know, if you're playing around with it, you know what's going on. Qbyte array. Cryptic key equal data oops, dot mid. And we want to say zero, 256, which really you could use pose from above because um, it should be at the 256 bit, 256th position. Man, I'm having a hard time with this today. So you could very easily, you know, substitute 256 that I've hard coded with this POS, um, which you really should do. I'm just doing this to show you how it works. So we want the encrypted key and the actual encrypted data. Now we're going to decrypt the AES key. And you know what? We forgot to free this, didn't we? Got to free that RSA key up. There we go. That may cause problems later on. Still haven't gone and see Captain America Civil War, kind of for the same reason. It just looks like it's, I don't know, my friends have seen it. They said it's amazing, but I don't know. I get kind of picky about these sort of things, having read the comic books as a kid. Um, all right, so anyways, so we're going to say key equal get private key because we are now you know decrypting we want to use our private key to decrypt I'm going to say RSA pointer to private private and then there's the uh, World of Warcraft movie which just came out which uh, I don't know some of my friends have given it really mixed reviews too so I may not go see that. I may just wait for that to come out on Netflix. I'm really picky about what movies I see in theaters because you're going, you're paying, you know, 40, 50 bucks to go, depending on where you go and how many people you're taking. And then you sit there with a room full of noisy, obnoxious people. And yeah. I'd much rather sit in my living room and I'm the noisy, obnoxious person, but you know, whatever. So we're going to see wrapper, decrypt RSA, and we're going to say private key. And then we, of course, need to take that with our encrypted key. Get that passphrase back. Once we have that passphrase, we can actually free this up. We're going to say C wrapper, free RSA, and we're going to free that bad boy up. So Q debug just for debug purposes we want to know that we decrypted that and now we want to actually decrypt the data. I may actually, I'm, I want to do this where we actually test the command line. I may split that into another video because my throat's getting kind of kind of raw here and I want to not cough into the microphone if I can help it. Um, I don't like doing that. Um, I know I'm not going to name names, but I know some, some video authors out there will actually split into like five minute videos and then plaster them with ads and stuff like that. I just, I don't like doing that. I actually don't think any of my videos have ads. At least they better not. All right, so now we're going to actually decrypt the data and then we're going to write file and we are going to say test.txt because we want to do this to the plain text and then plain and then 
last but not least, cue the bug. That could be bad. Give us a build, and of course something blew up. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm. What do you mean? Expected primary before RSA. What? Probably shouldn't use the type. I should use the variable. There we go. Head was not declared. Header probably would be a good idea here. And then once again, probably shouldn't use the type. What was the name of that thing? Private key. There you are. And all right, let's go ahead and let's delete this test ink. Just because why not? We're going to run this. And here's our program. It says encrypted key. And then there's our big, long 256-bit key. You can see the key length is 256 bits. Encryption is finished. And now we're decrypting. The header salted was found at 256. You notice this 256 number keeps popping up. That's the key size. The passphrase, and if you look at that, you can see that's base64 encoded. You can kind of tell by that telltale little equal sign at the end there. And then finish decrypting. So let's go out and see what we got here. There's our encrypted and there's our decrypted. So let's open this bad boy up. And sure enough, hello world, this is plain text. So. That is kind of how you combine the two. Um, some quick notes. You could put anything you really want. Let's open this back up and G-Edit here. Here is that test ENC file. Um, why it's not syntax highlighting, I don't know. I'm kind of happy it's not, but you can see how it's... Here's our key, um, and some of the bytes are probably not visible because of the encoding. Here's that header. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, there you are. That is the salt. Now, let's talk about security real quick before I cough my brains out here. Are we doing anything here that's insecure? Not really. Um, what we're doing is we have a AES password that we've used the public key to encrypt with. So it cannot be unencrypted with the public key. It can only be unencrypted with the private key, which we keep private to ourselves. That way, the only person, theoretically, that can decrypt this and get the key that decrypts that is us because we have the private key. Assuming that you, of course, have done your due diligence and you've kept your, your private key, well, private. So some people are going to go, well, it's insecure because you're giving away the key. No, it's not. This is actually what RSA is designed to do. It allows you to encrypt keys for other algorithms um, so that you can do this very same thing. So there's our key encrypted with the public key. The salt means absolutely nothing. The salt is completely worthless unless you have the passphrase and the initialization vector, which of course is encrypted and stored right here. Um, I should say the passphrase is there. All the passphrase is, is it jumps down into our code. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, and we use this bytes to key function in the OpenSSL library to actually convert the passphrase into a secure key and initialization vector. So that in a nutshell is all we're doing. Um, let me see how we're doing on time here. And let me, let me actually pause the video real quick. I want to try and finish this up. I don't want to make as too many videos unless I have to. Okay, we're back. Um, we're just going to continue. I'm not going to make another video. I hate making thousands and thousands of videos. So what we're going to test now is the uh, command line operability here. So we're going to say void encrypt. Ah. Encrypt command line. I do want to do that. And... We are just going to say, hmm, we're going to give it an ultra secure password here of, well, password. Yeah. 
and we are going to encrypt that, which just says hello from the OpenSSL command line. Um, we are going to write the file. File.txt, and we are going to write out the plain bytes. Let's go out here and delete these files while I'm thinking about it. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of wizardry here, and I'm going to save a lot of typing by just saying copy and paste. Um, this is the actual OpenSSL command line that we're going to be using. Um, OpenSSL, AES, 256-bit cipher block chaining. We're going to use a salt. We're going to use a message digest of SHA-1. Um, the in file will be file.txt, which we've just written up here. And then it will output the file, file.enc. And the password we're using is, of course, password. Password right up here. Um, that's very important that you do this right here, pass colon password. Um, you can also give it a pass file or a key file, as it's called. But I haven't really tested with that yet, so I'm not going to definitively say, hey, this is going to work. Um, you need to make sure that you have OpenSSL installed and working, key phrase working. If you get to that point, you know that it's installed, and then you can actually test things. So what this is going to do is it's going to come in here, it's going to write the plain text to file.txt, and then we're going to use the open SSL command line to actually encrypt that. Now we're going to decrypt this. Decrypt from our application. Let's just say, actually, you know what, let's just queue debug because I like Qdebug. There we go. That way it shows us right in the console what we're doing. Qbyte array encrypted. And if not read file, we want to read the uh, file.enc want to read that encrypted data and could not read the file I'm just going to copy and paste here yeah I don't know why I became so snobbish snobby whatever movie snob anyways I used to love going to the movies, but lately it's just like, man, it just gets expensive. You get noisy, you know, people in there that are just not very attentive to how rude they are to other people. Like when they use their flash, they use their phone as a flashlight. Oh, I hate that. A buddy of mine will actually talk on his phone during the movie, and I'm just looking at him like, dude, put it away or I'm going to break your arm. All right, so um, now what we need to do here is we need to decrypt AES and we're going to say passphrase hmm did I do that wrong I did let's call this pass phrase instead of password to Latin one And we want to do the encrypted data. And then we're going to say, if not, write file. We'll say file decrypted txt. Sometimes my mouse doesn't want to play along here. There we go. All 
All right, so we're going to just test our command line operability. Now, you should note the combined version that we were just playing around with. I don't think there really is an OpenSSL version of that. Um, I think you'd have to store it in separate files. Um, that's why I'm not going to demonstrate how to do both, because I couldn't figure out how to do it. So, got no extra files that we need. Let's give this a build. Make sure we didn't boo-boo anything, and of course we did. Return false. Oh, that's why, because this doesn't return func or doesn't return a value. There we go. All right, going to give this a good run. And it says encrypting on the command line, decrypting with the application finished. So let's see what our results here are. So here's our encrypted. You can see there's the open SSL version. You see how it starts with salted. And then we've got our salt and then the actual data. And then there's hello from the OpenSL command line. And here is the actual decrypted file. Hello from the OpenSSL command line. Now, if you open file underscore decrypted.txt, what we decrypted with our application, and it just looks like random junk, check your key. Um, the most, I mean, if it looks like this kind of garbage, check your key. Um, like I said, OpenSSL does not uh, fail gracefully. It'll just give you random junk back. And nine times out of 10, what I found is it's right here. Um, actually, right here at the very end. Sometimes what'll happen is like if you do this and you grab this guy and you say something like this, sometimes you'll get an extra zero or an extra slash RN or you know something back there will really mess with it and it won't jive well. That's why I just hard coded it like that. Um, so just be careful. Always check your key. Um, I've had many, many, many problems with OpenSSL and its keys. Um, but you know, when in doubt, check the key. Um, I'm going to say it one more time. When in doubt, check the key. <laughs> All right. So moving right along. Now we're going to do the exact opposite of that. And we are going to decrypt with the command line. I mean, we're going to encrypt with our application. Then we're going to use the command line to decrypt it. And this is going to be AES once again. Wow, that was a big mistake. Yeah, I might go get some ice cream today. I haven't had ice cream in like a long time. Um, all right, so we're just going to say, I don't know where that came from. I guess I'm getting hungry. I've been doing a lot of lifting and running, so I've been like, my appetite's just going up. So we're going to encrypt. Let me scroll down so we can see that better. And I'm just going to save a little bit of time and copy and paste out of my notes here because it's just, you know, nothing really important. We have our passphrase. We have our password, which is just a passphrase, you know, to a Qbyte array. And then uh, I'm going to say Qbyte array plain equal hello from our application. Why not? Just getting creative there. Now we want to say qbyte array encrypt, whoops, encrypted equal C wrapper encrypt AES. And we want to say password. And then we want to say the plain text. Um, once again, if you get these two kind of mixed around, you'll get an error. Um, always check your key whenever you have some sort of encryption problem. If not, write file, and we're going to say file.enc. And then we're going to say the encrypted data. So we're just going to write the encrypted data out. And let's actually do it a little nicer here. Now I'm going to just copy and paste this because I don't want to type all this out. 
So then we're going to decrypt it on the command line. So we're going to use the open SSL AES-256 FIFA block chaining. And then this little guy right here denotes that we are now decrypting instead of encrypting. We're going to have a salt message digest of SHA-1. The file input would be file ENC, which we are writing up here. The output will be file 2, and we're going to give it the same password. And then we're just going to say complete. Let's make sure all our little test files are out of here. And then decrypt command line. Give us a good build. Make sure we don't have any boo-boos. And make sure we double check. We clean those files out of there. Good. And encrypting, decrypting, complete. No error messages. Sure enough, there's our encrypted. Let's just give that a good look-see. Encrypted, sure enough. Starts with salted. And then let's just hello from our application. So we now have um, a working program that can encrypt, decrypt, and it's interoperable with the OpenSSL command line. Um, that was kind of the goal of these tutorials. So I think this is going to be the last one in our encryption tutorials for a while. And I'm probably, not 100% sure, but I'm probably going to go back to uh, QML because um, that's kind of where we left off in our tutorials. Well, my throat's really getting raw, so I'm going to stop this. But um, feel free to visit my website, voidrums.com. Um, we have the source code for this and all the other tutorials. Just go to Qt. And I know I say it every time. It's way, 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 you know where it is, way in the back here. Um, I'll try to post this up as soon as I can. Um, two other quick things. This website's 100% funded by your donations, so if you found this you know, useful, please donate. Um, if you work for a company and you're going to use my code, definitely please donate. Um, also, if you have questions, comments, concerns, join the Void Realms Facebook group. Um, I would encourage you not to email me directly because I get just an enormous amount of email as it is. Um, you can go into the Void Realms Facebook group, and there's well over 600 programmers, all walks of life. Um, and they can help you not just with this project, but pretty much any project you have. Uh, and they answer very quickly because everybody wants to help each other. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.